Let's bring in senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky, Navy's News contributor and former acting undersecretary for intelligence at the Department of Homeland Security, John Cohen, for more on this. Thank you both for being here. Aaron, what's the latest on this investigation and this attempt to answer all those questions that Matt just laid out? That's one avenue of investigation. Was this suspect uh, on the radar? Should he have been known to law enforcement? And did that 2021 arrest for menacing and kidnapping involving a, a threat to his mother, uh, should that have uh, enabled him to perhaps uh, not get firearms that, that were allegedly used to shoot up Club Q? And, and could anything have been done to maybe make an assessment of him that would have prevented this? The other avenue, of course, is trying to figure out his specific motive. We know this is being investigated as a hate crime. The authorities have been looking for any social media posts that might give them clues. We're told they haven't found any specific accounts yet, but the internet is a vast place and it's always possible he was posting under an assumed name. So John, let's talk a little bit more about that previous arrest last June. He was accused of having a homemade bomb and threatening his mother, but no record of prosecutors moving forward with charges here. So is an arrest alone enough to put someone on law enforcement's radar? No, I mean, we've learned over the past several years, as we've experienced multiple mass casualty attacks across the country, uh, that the traditional techniques used by law enforcement, arrest and prosecution, uh, aren't sufficient in order to stop these types of attacks. Key questions in my mind, why were the charges dropped? What types of behaviors were, was this individual exhibiting? Who was uh, seeing those behaviors, family members and others? Were those behaviors reported to law enforcement? Why didn't law enforcement conduct a threat assessment? They could have, uh, if he was deemed to be high risk, they could have taken steps to mitigate that risk, including going to the courts and preventing acts access to firearms under the red flag laws. Aaron, given Colorado's privacy laws, how easy is it to get answers to those questions? Not easy so far. We're, we were told by the courts there were no publicly available records involving the 2021 arrest. We know about it from an earlier press release by the El Paso County Sheriff's Department. We spoke to the sheriff and he said he did not recall the incident and could not say whether a red flag law should have been tripped here or whether that would have made a difference. That there are no publicly available court records suggests that perhaps the case was sealed for some reason but we're still trying to, to find out what became of that case. So John, this is now being investigated as a hate crime. How does that change how investigators go about this? And how do you protect events like, like a drag show in this case? This happened right after a drag show ended. How do you protect these kind of events that have been targeted in the past and keep them safe in the future? From an investigative perspective, uh, the charge of hate crime will really go to the motive. Was this an ideologically motivated attack? Was the attack, the ideology uh, one that was discriminatory towards, uh, in this case, the uh, LBGTQ community? That could subject the individual to federal charges. As far as how you prevent these types of attacks, we have to do a better job in law enforcement in understanding uh, what are those communities, what are those locations that are most at risk for these types of attacks, and putting in place security measures so they can remain open to the public, but at the same time protect people from being targeted for attack. All right, Aaron Katursky, John Cohen, thank you both. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.